Hello everyone. Today we will have a new lesson about operating system of file system and security. Let's talk about first the operating system in terms of file system. A file is a name collection of related information that is recorded on secondary storage such as magnetic disk, magnetic tapes, and optical disk. In general, a file is a sequence of bits, bytes, lines, or records whose meaning is defined by the file's creator and user. A file structure should be according to a required format that the operating system can understand, such as a file has a certain defined structure according to its type, a text file is a sequence of characters organized into lines. A source file is a sequence of procedures and functions. Is a sequence file is a sequence of bytes organized into blocks that are understandable by the machine. When operating system defines different file structures, it also contains the code to support this file structure. Unix, MS-DOS support minimum number of file structure. Well, the file type refers to the ability of the operating system to distinguish different types of files, such as text files, source files, and binary files, and so on. Many operating systems support many types of files. Operating systems like MS-DOS and Unix have the following types of files. Ordinary files. These are the files that contain user information. These may have text, databases, or executable program. The user can apply various operations on such files like add, modify, delete, or even remove the entire file. Next is directory files. These files contain list of file names and other information related to these files. Another is the special files. These files are also known as device files. These files represent physical devices like disks, terminals, printers, networks, tape drive. These files are of two types. First, the character special files, wherein data is handled character by character, as in case of terminals or printers. Another is the block special files, wherein data is handled in blocks as in the case of disk and tapes. What is file access mechanisms? File access mechanism refers to the manner in which the records of a file may be accessed. There are several ways to access files. These are sequential access, direct or random access, and index sequential access. Discuss the, sequ discuss the sequential access. A sequential access is that in which the records are accessed in some sequence, such as the information in the file is processed in order, one record after the other. This access method is the most primitive one. Example, compilers usually access files in this fashion. Next is the direct or random access. Random access file organization provides accessing the records directly. Each record has its own address on the file with by the help of which it can be directly accessed for reading or writing. The records need not be in any sequence within the file and they need not be in adjacent locations on the storage medium. Next is the index sequential access. This mechanism is built up on base of sequential access. An index is created for each file which contains pointers to various blocks. Index is searched sequentially and its pointer is used to access the file directly. So what is the space allocation? Files are allocated these spaces by operating system. Operating systems deploy the following three main ways to allocate this space of files. And these are contiguous allocation, link allocation, and index allocation. The contiguous allocation 
each file occupies a contiguous address space on disk. Assign this address is in linear order, easy to implement. External fragmentation is a major issue with this type of allocation technique. Next is the link allocation, wherein each file carries a list of links to these blocks. Directory contains link or pointer to first block of a file. No external fragmentation. Effectively using sequential access file, inefficient in case of direct access file. While the index allocation, it provides solution to problems of contiguous and link allocation. An index block is created having all pointers to files. Each file has its own index block which stores the addresses of this space occupied by the file. Directory contains addresses of index blocks of files. Let's proceed to the operating system in terms of security. Security refers to providing a protection system to computer system resources, such as CPU, memory, disk, software programs, and most importantly, data or information is stored in the computer system. If a computer program is run by an unauthorized user, then he or she may cause severe damage to computer or data stored in it. So a computer system must be protected against an unauthorized access, malicious access to system memory, viruses, worms, and so on. So these are the authentication, one-time passwords, program threats, system threats, and computer security classifications. First, the authentication. Authentication refers to identifying each user of the system and associating the executing programs with those users. It is the responsibility of the operating system to create a protection system which ensures that a user who is running a particular program is authentic. Operating systems generally identifies or authenticates users using following three ways. First, with the username and password. User need to enter a registered username and password with the operating system to log in into the system. Next is user card or key, wherein user need to punch card in card slot or enter key generated by key generator an option provided by operating system to log in into the system. Next is the user attribute fingerprint or I written up pattern or signature, wherein the user need to pass his or her attribute via designated input device used by operating system to log in into the system. Next is the one-time passwords. One-time passwords provide additional security along with normal authentication. In one-time password system, a unique password is required every time user tries to log in into the system. Once a one-time password is used, then it cannot be used again. One-time passwords are implemented in various ways. Additional security is the random numbers. Users are provided cards having numbers printed along with corresponding alphabets. System asks for numbers corresponding to few alphabets randomly chosen. Another is secret key, wherein users are provided a hardware device which can create a secret ID map with user ID. System asks for such secret ID which is to be generated every time prior to login. And another is the network password, wherein some commercial applications send one-time passwords to user on registered mobile or email, which is required to be entered prior to login. Let's talk about the program threats. Operating systems, processes, and kernel do the designated tasks as instructed. If a user program made this process to malicious tasks, then it is known as program threats. 
One of the common examples of program thread is a program installed in a computer which can store and send user credentials via network to some hacker. Following is the list of some well-known program threads, like Trojan Horse. Such program traps user lag in credentials and stores them to send to malicious user who can later on log into computer and can access system resources. Another is trap door. If a program which is designed to work as required, have a security hole in its code and perform illegal action without knowledge of user, then it is called to have a trap door. Another is the logic bump. Logic bump is a situation when a program misbehaves only when certain conditions met, otherwise it works as a genuine program, it is harder to detect. Another is the virus. Virus, as name suggests, can replicate themselves on computer system. They are highly dangerous and can modify or delete user files, crash systems. A virus also is generally a small code embedded in a program. As user accesses the program, the virus starts getting embedded in other files or programs and can make system unusable for user. Let's talk about what is system threats. System threats refers to misuse of system services and network connections to put user in trouble. System threats can be used to launch program threats on a complete network called as program attack. System threats create such an environment that operating system resources or user files are misused. Following is the list of some well-known system threats. First, worm. The worm is a process which can choke down as a system performance by using system resources to extreme levels. A worm process generates its multiple copies where each copy uses system resources, prevents all other processes to get required resources. Worms processes can even shut down an entire network. Another is port scanning. Port scanning is a mechanism or means by which a hacker can detect system vulnerabilities to make an attack on the system. Next is denial of service. Denial of service attacks normally prevents user to make legitimate use of the system. For example, a user may not be able to use internet if denial of service attacks browser's content settings. Meanwhile, the computer security classifications. As per the U.S. Department of Defense Trusted Computer Systems Evaluation Criteria, there are four security classifications in computer systems, such as A, B, C, and D. This is why we use specifications to determine and model the security of systems and of security solutions. Following is the brief description of each classification. For the type A, highest level, uses formal design specifications and verification techniques, grants a high degree of assurance of process security. For the type B, provides mandatory protection system, have all the properties of a class C2 system, attaches a sensitivity label to each object. It is of three types, such as B1, wherein maintains the security label of each object in the system. Label is used for making decisions to access control. Then B2, wherein extends the sensitivity labels to each system resource, such as storage, objects, supports, covered channels, and auditing of events. And last type is the B3. It allows creating lists or user groups for access control to grant access or revoke access to a given name object. Next classification type is type C. It provides protection and user accountability using other capabilities. It is of two types, such as C1, wherein 
incorporates controls so that users can protect their private information and keep other users from accidentally reading or deleting their data. Unix versions are mostly C1 class. Another is C2. It adds an individual level access control to the capabilities of a C1 level system. And last classification type is the type B. It is the lowest level, minimum protection, MS-DOS, Window 3.1 fall in this category. So that's all the ideas regarding the operating system in terms of file system and security. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.